all the saints who from their labors rest, who thee by faith before the world confess thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. Oh, may thy soldiers, faithful, true, and bold, fight as the saints who nobly fought of old, and win with him the victor's crown of gold. Oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. We give thanks to the Father, who has made us worthy to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Give thanks for life, the measure of our day. Decays, yet sing to God oh, the love of praise. Alleluia, Alleluia. Psalm 34, verses 1 through 10 and 22. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all of my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints. For those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Holy Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. So this is the Feast of All Saints. All Saints isn't about superhero-ness so much as it is about duty and a wholehearted effort to live into Christ's faith in us. All Saints isn't about the unattainable as much as it is about the eternal day of peace that Christ has shown the world in his life, in his death, and his resurrection. All Saints is very much about a focus on the communion of saints. Maybe the communion of saints can be imagined as an otherworldly table where somehow everybody sits together at the same time. Uptight reformers and the absurdly powerful and the desperately lost. All at one table. In the last few years, in places where there are many craft breweries close together, I've noticed these strange vehicles, trolley-like vehicles, but with two changes. One, it has a table in the middle and a dozen seats around it. And secondly, those seats are attached to bicycle pedals. Those trolley bike tables, they're moved not by an engine, but instead they are propelled by everyone on the trolley cycling together. It is quite the contraption, and its intention is not pious sobriety. Yet, it does ferment a really fruitful image of the communion of saints, what that would look like around a table. It makes a refreshing metaphor for this communion of saints around a table with Jesus. A table with Jesus leading the tour from the front seat and the Holy Spirit pushing us who are on this trolley bike table thing, pushing us from behind. At this table is a relationship of never-ending gratitude and generosity, both in time and beyond time. When I hear Jesus tell us of these world-upturning teachings that we call the Beatitudes, I imagine them as Jesus' invitation, both beyond and in time, to his eternal table, and just maybe his eternal trolley-bike table. The powers that be that Jesus encountered could overlook his wholehearted generosity with the last, the least, and the lost is just do-gooderness. But what they could not ignore was his exposing their shallow desperation and selfish disregard for God's beloved. They didn't want a seat at that trolley bike table. We have begun the annual stewardship campaign with an invitation to begin by sharing the wholehearted generosity that you experience through Christ Church. I hope that you will feel and see in this stewardship campaign an invitation to examine your practices with Jesus and your promises to God and the duty to generations undreamed of, the communion of saints that haven't been born yet. Generations past were wholeheartedly generous to you and to us. They are there on that table trolley bike. They are pedaling. They are doing a whole lot of the financial pedaling. We haven't panicked this year because of their clear commitment to us, their commitment to the communion of saints. Our gratitude for this should be evident by our response, a response of giving and receiving that shares in that peddling, shares in that peddling by serving the neighbor, pursuing justice, 
daily study and prayer, and promising gifts of time and talent and treasure. That is how the church embodies Christian duty and peddles through the virtues of God's big table in every age. When Jesus welcomes you to this table, and Jesus looks at you in the eyes and offers these beatitudes, what do you feel? Do you feel satisfaction? Do you feel regret? I invite you to spend some time this week with your feelings, imagining yourself at that trolley bike table with Jesus and his saying these very beatitudes to you. Imagine yourself with the whole communion of saints. What feelings does that bring out in you? The world is about to turn. It always is. And I trust that God's will is that it turns toward generosity and wholeheartedness for all and from all. I also feel that this very trust is very hard for me to get a solid grip on right now. Maybe you're there too. So my response is to come to Christ's table, whether that is in person or through this morning prayer video. And we come and we pray and we study and we serve. And we do our part. We do our part with Jesus. And we do our part with all the saints on our side. I don't know how that trolley cycle thing works. However, it is a jolly good metaphor for a way of life that we call the communion of saints and that we celebrate today on All Saints and that we celebrate every single day of the year, but sometimes we forget to focus on. The communion of saints and this image of this bicycle, tricycle, whatever trolley metaphor thing, it is a beautiful image of the way of being church that we are practicing, but practicing differently right now. Our seats are a little more spread apart but we're all still pedaling. We must continue, continue the wholehearted generosity of staying home more, of carefully distancing, of wearing masks and washing our hands because the communion of saints did their duty for us. I believe that the communion of saints is as real as those trolley table bikes and that we can travel further, further than our efforts can carry us alone because we are never alone. Jesus is at the head of that table and an infinity of infinities of saints is sitting all around us, pedaling with us as we make it through these days. So let us pray. Healing and sovereign God, overmatch our resistant ears with your transforming speech. Infiltrate our jadedness and our fatigue. Touch our yearning by your words and through your out loudness. Draw us closer to you. We are ready to listen. In the name of the Holy Trinity, pedaling with us forever, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Prayers of the People Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all those who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Today we pray for the names on our prayer lists. Catherine, Maureen, Mackenzie, Richard, Fran, Michelle, Pam, John, Jay, Donna, Sue, Joyce, Rebecca, Anna, Jack, Jane, Nancy, Cameron, Megan, Jessica, Donna, and baby Vincent. For our military, Richard, Eric, Michael, Chris, Mark, Michael, Marshall, Nicole, Joshua, David, Tony, Mark, Timothy, Jerome, William, Austin, Neil, Rob, Evan, James, and Robert. For our first responders, Jim, Rob, Frank, Tom, Joan, David, Michael, Mariana, Aaron, Josh, Doug, Art, Lee, Jesse, Mitchell, Wayne. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy, that we may also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and one fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges, guide the people of the United States in the election of officials and representatives, that by faithful administration and wise laws, the rights of all may be protected and our nation be enabled to fulfill your purposes through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Holy God, who calls the world into being and calls us into Christ's church, we thank you for the church that is our heart, for the mission of the church that is our joy, and for the ministry of the church that is our task. We thank you for the generosity of Christ Church Ridley Park, for its steadfastness over time, for its people who have named your name and lived your life. We are blessed by its faithful witness, wholehearted life, and its abundant, caring ways. As we consider our commitments for the upcoming year, make us courageous, make us open, that we may become a resounding alleluia through your passion and into your victory. We pray in the name of Jesus, crucified and risen, wholehearted shepherd of the church.
Amen. If we were gathered together in person, this would be the moment for announcements and for the offertory sentence. I have four announcements for you today. Number one is naming that we have a new place to send our prayer shawl ministry, and that place is a place we're well acquainted with, a fair acres. Not only do we have a place to send it, but they are desirous of even more than we're currently making. So those of you who are looking for a way to keep your hands busy and a ministry of prayer and love to someone you may not even know, um, invite you into the practice of prayer shawl ministry. Those can be knitted or crocheted, and we're going to help you learn more about that through some internet links. My second announcement is that I want to thank absolutely everybody who gave their heart and time to the pumpkin patch. This has been one of the most extraordinarily successful years we've ever had with the pumpkin patch. And given that it seemed like such a gamble and even a point at which it didn't seem like it was going to happen, um, the love of God and the commitment of this community to um, this life-giving ministry of brilliant pumpkins on our lawn um, is just unmistakable this year. So thank you to everyone who gave their time, who gave their backs and their hearts to turning the pumpkins and so on, and to those who came out and um, purchased pumpkins this year. We do want to say that on Sunday, November 1st, all the pumpkins are free. Take them away from us. A number of those Cinderella pumpkins actually should last a while, so if you're looking for some decor for the rest of the year, we have an option for you. The third announcement is that our once a month evening Eucharist, which is limited to 12 people only, will not be on Tuesday this month. It will be on November 2nd this month, and we're moving the time earlier to make it easier for people for whom driving at night is um, an anxiety creating moment. So it's November 2nd at 5.30 right here, 12 people. We do need people to sign up ahead of time. So if you know someone for whom that evening service is an option that they would feel safer at, especially a smaller service, please reach out to them and encourage them and even help them sign up for that. And then lastly is a reminder to turn in your wholehearted generosity signs. These are mine. Um, without CCRP, we wouldn't have this wonderful classic worship, and with it, we welcome the questions. What a gift to this community. So get those signs turned in. Get those pictures of you and your signs turned in so we can put them in the slideshow for the wholehearted generosity stewardship campaign. Let us say together this statement of our offertory. With grateful hearts, let us give what we have. With joyful hope, let us give for what can be. Let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen.
close to his heart. The Lord gather you into his loving arms, and the Lord lead you into paths of peace. And the blessing of the one Lord God of all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and keep you this day and forever and for always. Amen. The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. One, two, three, four.